All right, so this is gonna be a four-wheeler update with my children and how they fit on these four-wheelers. It's been two years, and so it's time to do an update on these. These are the same four-wheelers they were in in the last video. I'll put a link to that video below. So if you wanna go back and see how they fit and get their heights and weights at that time, um, it's all in that video. But this is gonna be the two-year update. They're still on these, like I said. I got the same kids I used to have as well, but they are bigger. She is now four foot eight. Four foot eight, and she's about 68 pounds. This one is four foot tall, and he's 47, 48 pounds. So that'll give you an idea of their sizes and their weights while they're on these. This is the Polaris 90, which, and I'm sorry for the background noise. We have locusts in the trees, they're going crazy. Um, so this is the Polaris 90. Uh, this is now Polaris 110, but the dimensions and the specifications are all identical. So the only thing that changed is it's 20 more cc's. Uh, this is the Kawasaki 50cc KFX, which is virtually identical to the 90. The only difference with the 90 is the tire size. So if you look at the specs on it, you're gonna see that it sits a little higher and it's just a touch wider overall, I believe, but that's only because of the tires. The actual four-wheeler is exactly the same except for the engine. So this is a pretty small scale down 90 compared to the Polaris. Um, so both, both four-wheelers have held up really well, uh, no complaints. I'm not gonna do a full review on these four-wheelers right now. That'll be another video. This is really just a video showing people uh, the sizes of the four-wheelers with my children on them. Okay, so here's a side shot of my son sitting on the four-wheeler, as you can see. He's got some growing in still with this four-wheeler. He's got some growing in to do. This is a larger uh, 50cc four-wheeler. The others, like the Polaris 50cc and some of the others, are smaller than this 50cc four-wheeler. But as I mentioned, this is the same size as the 90, and the 90 is actually on the small side for a 90cc four-wheeler. So it's a great in-between, and he's gonna be on this one, I would guess, for another year or two. And uh, so this is a really good shot showing you uh, his leg extension and his feet are flat um, and uh, he fits it really well still. Okay, so here's a side shot of my daughter on her four-wheeler. Um, as you can see, she is starting to get a little long for this four-wheeler. Still fits her well, she still rides it great, um, but it is getting to where her legs are parallel still, her, her thigh, but it won't be long before she, it actually is gonna start pushing her knees up um, as she's riding it. So this one is gonna be outgrown before too long. So, but uh, we're gonna try and get a little more out of it. Okay, so I wanna go over one critical dimension that I think a lot of people don't really take into consideration who maybe are shopping for their first four-wheeler for their children, and that's the stance or the width. Um, this, the width is what's gonna keep your child from rolling the four-wheeler, and it's also gonna stop it if they have to take an evasive movement because, or maneuver because they're about to hit something, they're gonna cut it real sharp, and that's where rollers, rollovers happen. And rollovers are gonna be one of your more common accidents on these four-wheelers. Um, and that's where this outlaw really shines. Um, compared to a lot of other 90cc and 110cc class four-wheelers, the front end on this is really wide. And this four-wheeler is almost impossible to roll over. I mean, she's got, she gets going pretty quick and she'll cut the wheel and after I cut grass and it's wet, she'll actually slide the rear end out and steer into the turn. Something I didn't teach her. I don't know how she learned it. You um, the you watched me do it. Yeah, you did the mud. But um, and and so this just doesn't flip over. So that's where width is uh, uh, is really going to be critical. And you can see on the Kawasaki, it's also very pretty wide for a 50 cc class four wheeler. But the KFX 90, which is the same width as that one, with exception of having a little larger tires, is not near as wide as the Polaris 110s. Okay, so this is one more shot from another angle of my children on their four-wheelers. Um, you can see mine in the back, that's a Rancher 350. It's an old, it's a 15-year-old bike, so they're probably a lot bigger nowadays. But, um, but that's my Rancher, and uh, 
And actually, my daughter, when doing chores, uses my rancher when we're hauling feed or shavings uh, to the back of the property or if I'm cutting tree limbs and she's hauling stuff to the burn pile for me, um, she uses my rancher 350. And in talking about my daughter using my Rancher 350, I wanna just mention something real quick. There's a lot of safety police on YouTube, it's nothing new. Um, I don't know why they can't get over themselves. They're probably the same people who drive 80 miles an hour down the interstate and 30 through the Walmart parking lot, but they feel the need to come on here and tell everybody what they need to do, how they should uh, address their kids and the safety equipment they should use in riding these four-wheelers. But I just wanna make a note. Um, we live in a very rural area and children my daughter's age riding adult four-wheelers mm -hmm. is something you see all the time and they virtually never have anything on except jeans shoes and a t-shirt uh, they're usually doing chores sometimes they're just trying to get from point a to point b on a large piece of property so it all comes down to your child's uh, res how responsible they are if they're daredevils like my son can be a little bit of a daredevil so can she at times um, and also their proficiency every child is different so you have to judge what your child needs as far as safety equipment, as far as, you know, what you need to do to keep your own child safe. Um, that being said, maybe spend a little less time worrying about what everybody else is doing to keep their child safe. Since you don't know their proficiencies, you don't know how responsible they are or how they typically ride or where they're riding. Um, if they're, needless to say, if you're on a trail and there are trees uh, two foot to either side of you, you have to wear safety equipment. It could be very dangerous. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just do a few shots of uh, my children riding their four wheels. I'll put a GoPro on their helmet and let y'all take a ride with them. I wanna point out something really quick. Um, these are what they call, they call them thumb savers. Uh, you can get them anywhere. You can get them on Amazon, Walmart. Uh, there's a bunch of places to sell these. And all it is is an extension for his thumb. And it really, he, he complained a lot about his thumb hurting uh, because he had to reach out here to grab it. And it also, it makes it the leverage so much easier to push and hold. So before where he could only ride his four-wheeler maybe 10 minutes and he would be complaining about his thumb hurting, this has made all the difference in the world. He can ride it, he rides it for an hour, sometimes more at a time now, and he never complains about his thumb anymore. Oh, so
All right, so that's really all I'm gonna uh, put on this video. That's gonna conclude it. What I wanna do now is I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna get on my computer and I wanna do some, uh, go over some statistics of various uh, manufacturers and models of four wheelers and how they compare as far as width, height, uh, seat height, and things like that, and uh, even weight. Um, so to give you all an idea of how these compare to some others, unfortunately, I wish I had some others that I could just set my kids on and we could compare them, but these are the two that I have. So uh, we'll just have to do it on, um, on a screen. Okay, so here I have some statistics on my screen. Uh, I put in the two most popular 50cc four-wheelers, which would be the Polaris and the uh, Kawasaki KFX 50. Um, then I put in the Kawasaki KFX 90, the Honda TRX 90, the Kimco 90S, the Polaris 110, and the Raptor 90, which is a Yamaha. And then I went ahead and threw in the Honda Recon 250 just to give you a sense of size, uh, comparatively speaking, to some of these other four-wheelers. So this is my son's four-wheeler, the KFX 50 here and here you can see this one is my daughter's four-wheeler the Polaris 110 and the like I was saying um, the width difference you can see 34.7 compared to 36.75 and don't let these numbers fool you it doesn't think you wouldn't think well that's just two inches well you know that's really not that much difference but two inches is huge so don't let the small difference in these numbers uh, fool you. You saw in the video just how much wider this Polaris really was compared to my son's uh, KFX 50. So, uh, so that should give you a, a, a good point of reference on um, how drastic two inches difference uh, can make can be. Um, and then if you look at the width of the Polaris Outlaw 50 it's much more narrow than the Kawasaki KFX 50. And here you can see that the KFX 90 is uh, a little less than an inch wider. And as I said in the video, that is because of tire size. Um, that's where that difference comes in. Um, but let's go over all of them. Uh, lengthwise, you can see that the uh, Polaris 110 is the longest of all of these. And the KFX 50, if we're only looking at the 50s, is quite a bit longer than the uh, Polaris Outlaw 50. Uh, it's also wider. I could not get an overall height statistic on the or specification on the uh, Kawasaki KFX 50, but seat height is much more important uh because that's where your center of gravity is right you know your seat is right above the engine so this is where your center of gravity is going to come from and you'll see the Polaris 50 does have a lower center of gravity than the K KFX 50 so even though it's more narrow it is closer to the ground which will help with rollovers um wheelbase you can see there's a pretty drastic difference the KFX 50 is uh quite a bit longer uh, and it's also quite a bit heavier so that's the 50 cc's. Now if we go up to the 90's you can see that the, Polar the Polaris and the Raptor are going to be well, really just the Polaris 110. This is going to be your by far the longest uh, ATV in the in the group. The width, the, the Yamaha Raptor 90 has a really wide stance. I mean it's really wide. So this would be a great four-wheeler in the 90cc class because of the width. Uh, behind that one is the Polaris 110, but it is quite a bit uh, more narrow than the Yamaha Raptor. Um, now seat height, the Polaris 110 is going to be the highest in the class, which means it does have the highest, I guess you could say the highest center of gravity. Um, but the seat height on the Raptor 90 is actually much higher than the seat height on the Polaris. Um, I'm not really sure why that is. Obviously, the seat just sits higher um, than the, uh, it's just much closer to the overall height than the Polaris. Maybe that 
is the difference from the seat to the handlebars. Uh, the top of the handlebars is going to be your, your highest point. So maybe there's a lot more reach or something. I'm not real sure. Um, as far as wheelbase goes, the Polaris 110 is actually the longest. It's longer than the Raptor 90, but if you could notice in the videos, those front wheels on the Polaris are pushed way out. And so that is probably why the wheelbase is so, uh, is so long on the Polaris 110. And then this is a bad number. I apologize for that. But if you look at the weights, you can see the Raptor 90 is very heavy compared to some of the others. Uh, the KFX 90 is also a pretty heavy four-wheeler. The Kimco 90S, for whatever reason, is very uh, lightweight, which isn't a bad thing uh, for sure. But uh, it is a much lighter four-wheeler. Now, then if you go over here, you can see that when you get to the Recon 250, you're dealing with a much larger ATV. Uh, it's much longer. Um, it's actually not much wider than the Raptor 90, but the, it's much uh, higher. The overall height is a lot more. The seat height really isn't too much more than the Raptor 90, but it is more. Um, the wheelbase is a lot longer than any of the other, uh, what you would call kids four-wheelers. And it's substantially heavier, much, much heavier. So um, so there's your, your, uh, your specifications. That might help when you're looking at some of these comparatively uh, speaking with the ones that I showed in the video the Kawasaki 50 and the Polaris 110 and um, hopefully this helps uh, really be able to clear up the differences between all these four-wheelers